Hey, it's Bridget. Nice to see you. We're going to do a channeling for 2022. We're going to look ahead into the new year and we're going to connect with Stephen Hawking and have conversation. This was actually inspired by one of my clients who oftentimes when she and I talk, um, Stephen Hawking just popped in this last time. Um, we talk about like star energy and astral energy and things like that because she has spirit guides that are astral and star guides. So Stephen Hawking popped in right at the end of our conversation. And so she and I, she's a medium also. So she and I had this conversation and um, I said, oh my gosh, I have to channel him for the new year. So we're going to do that together. So welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope. I'm glad you're here today. Let's have a conversation with Stephen Hawking about the year 2022. So Stephen, it's nice to see you. I literally want to stand up and shake his hand. He is... He can stand up. He is, looks like a younger version of himself, okay? So he's not confined or restricted to what his human body felt like in this lifetime. He is showing up like a college professor, like you would expect him to, and um, coming to have a conversation with us. Hi, nice to meet you. So he intentionally stands up. I feel like we're at like a news anchor desk, like with a desk and like he's sitting on the other side now, sitting down but he wanted me to see that he was standing up so I could share that with you so you guys understand that. So if you have a loved one on the other side that had a physical challenge or an illness that caused them to be, bed, to be bedridden, the energy of the physical body is something that is cast aside. And so there's not usually that kind of trauma that I see. I don't usually see that kind of um, trauma. So let me just turn off my phone. Sorry, I just gotta... <laughs> Just got a text message. You might have heard that. Okay. So thanks for being here. He says, the wonders of modern technology, he says. Is it a curse or is it a blessing is what he says. Stephen says, is it a curse or is it a blessing? I feel like I should call you Professor Hawking, but because he feels so um, professor-like. <laughs> so, uh, but I won't. I'll just call you Stephen because that's what you have said before, right? We've are also, you guys, we've channeled Stephen Hawking before. So check out the playlist. So I want to specifically talk to you about 2022. And if, if there are some things you can share with us um, about what we can expect. First of all, let's talk about the health of us as our society. We've been experiencing a pandemic for almost two years now. And I think a lot of people would be right with me to wanna to know if how we can expect this to maybe lighten up or affect our lives in the future or what's going on with that. Can you talk about that a little bit? He says, ah, the science of evolution. He says evolution, the science of evolution, he says. Everything must take its course, he says. And you would think as though um, humans would understand that there is a particular pattern or a rhythm to these things. And once the cycle is complete, then yes, you will in some ways move on from this, but in others you will always be, oh wow, that's really depressing. He literally says forever stuck in this place. Okay, can you speak more about that? Because that sounds pretty gloom and doom. And I know you don't mean it that way. Because people might interpret it that way and be like, okay, I'm out, you know, no, 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 you guys, wait, 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 let's listen to more, okay? What do you mean by that? Some people will stick here. He says, something like this, a crisis of this magnitude, creates so much suffering that there is a collective imprint in our consciousness as humans. He says, it will affect for years, decades, generations to come because the people who survived this will have within them this experience as an integrated part of their cellular memory. And because of that, everyone born after will have a, a resonant energy of this experience, this process. Okay, so can you talk to us about the good parts of that? Because it feels like really serious, deep, heavy, and intense. He says, well, well it isn't light. It is difficult whenever you consider a health crisis, he says, that gets at the core of the morality of humans. He says that is because we need to be shaken as a society. He's saying we, us humans need to be shaken as a society. It's intended to create chaos so that things can be upended. 
so that there has to be a new structure that's put in place. This leads to advances in, in science, in, in technologies, in, in culture and civilizations as a whole, based upon what you move through together and the ways in which you learn to cope and manage. There becomes a new structure to things, a new pecking order, so to speak, in relationship as a whole, like as a, as a community, as a family, down to the, just the smallest microcosm, he says. It affects everything. It affects not only your morality and your mindset, but it then also has these impacts in your community for um, the economics of things. Both the micro and macroeconomic level are deeply impacted by this, as is science. Bioscience and technology is advanced. It's forced to move ahead by leaps and bounds, perhaps more than humans have been willing to invest in it. There is this incredible need to push ahead to get the solution or resolution to this, this problem. But the truth is, is it's just another variant that must be lived with. It must learn, we must learn how to integrate this. And so the body, the human body needs some time. And he's showing me generations to integrate and understand how to handle the disease itself in the body and the impacts of it externally. He's saying, he's showing me the economics is a really big piece, huge piece. Can we talk about that? Well, well, first of all, can you give us any kind of reprieve or any kind of timelines or dates or anything about the pandemic as a whole? Like when, when is this going to be done? Or from what you're saying, we're just going to learn to live with it. Because it's a part of you now. It's a part of a tra traumatic experience you've experienced. So it's a part of your memory. He says it's not going to go away because there's going to be this, this kind of looking over your shoulder of the fear of when the next one comes. And he says, it's like the hundred year flood mentality. He says, after a while, after some time, you get used to this and people will incorporate living in fear of this as like a shadow part of themselves. And he says, it actually becomes part of a personality trait that you have. Oh, what? That sounds depressing. He says, ah, ah, ah. But listen, it creates a hope and resiliency and a faith in something greater than just one human and an understanding of how you need each other that is essential in order for the human society as a race to ex continue to exist. So had this not occurred, he says, there would be a much shorter timeline and expiration date on humans. He says, not just physically with the body response and getting a stronger body, but, but in the society expectations of the human race itself so you wouldn't destroy each other. It's providing the container to be able to create more of a solid, interconnected, interdependent society, he says, and in little ways too, like just the nuclear family and then the extended family and then the neighborhood and then the community and then the state and then the countries and then the regions and then I mean, it's just and then he's kind of showing how it gets bigger, like the incentric circles. And what he's actually showing me is the the flower of life sacred geometry, you guys. So it's a bunch of circles. I don't have it down here. It's actually upstairs, but so the concentric circles, he's showing that. Like this needed to happen to create this. He said it was essential for your survival and, and you don't recognize it. He says, and, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't, but it's something that was needed. This was the catalyst for the creation of the support structure that is, that is needed as a whole for humanity. He says for all of the things, for families, for um, especially he's like showing me children for gen the generations and for the cultures, for all, all of the systems, education, health, political, economic, all of the systems. So can you talk about, so, so um, is there going to be any kind of major thing with the COVID stuff, like in 2022, that we have to be worried about or concerned about? Or like, it just feels like it's like the long goodbye. Or he says, you're going to learn as a society to live with it, and your bodies will adjust to it as well, just like the flu shot, just like the flu kind of vibe, he says. 
And he says, but it's like the flu and pneumonia together. He said, so some people will continue to be very susceptible to it while others will not. So over time, there will be immunity that's built up. Yes, he says, yes, there will be. Mm -hmm. He says, but fear is perpetuating the weakened immune system. And he's gonna say that out loud. Again, fear is perpetuating the weakening of the immune system. All right, so can you talk to us about the economy or finance? Can you talk to us about the financial systems, like for us ourselves, like individually as countries or globally, economy, economic wise? He's showing me China right away. Um, China, Russia, and he's showing me like the Middle East, specifically Iran, I think it is. China, Russia, Iran, the United States. The United States isn't as big of an influence in 2022. It seems like the United States is infighting still, is what he's showing me, like this infighting conflict within ourselves. We're still breaking things up. We're still separating and sorting things is what he looks like. He looks like we're still separating things. He's kind of giving me the vibe of like cleaning out your closet and having to put things in piles, like this goes to the Goodwill. These are too small. This is different season. This is just old. This is what I want to keep like that. Like we're still doing that in the in the U.S. specifically is what he's showing me. Um, yeah, he says the United States has a tendency to go off on tangents, to fight fires. He says, and quite literally because there could be more. Um, he's showing me like volcano, like stuff that's volatile in the environment. So fires, explosions. Um, natural disaster type stuff, volcanoes, there could be more of that. He's not saying like, oh, it's all scary, everybody freak out. It's not like that. He's just saying, hey, in 2022, the, the biggest environmental impact piece would be like a fire type of a thing, more likely. That would have more of an impact. Might be the fire inside the earth. I don't know, I don't know what's causing this. Um, um, but financially, I'm asking you about finances, why are you showing me? natural disasters in the U.S. Because he says the U.S. typically does influence, has a lot, um, everybody reacts to what the U.S. is doing, whether the U.S. has prestige power or not anymore, that's kind of up for discussion, you know, but that everyone else, other countries and other regions react and respond to what is happening in the U.S. and they check that out. He says that goes for economics and global economy is deeply impacted by the United States. So within the United States, and he says, he showed me cars. Um, I had this experience myself because we, I need to buy a car and I'm not going to because like there's all these wait lists you have to get on, everything is astronomically priced. There's also huge inflation that's starting to happen and stuff that's an impact and um, of all the financial stress that we've had during, during the pandemic. And also there's been an increase in wages, but that's also driving the prices up. So when the wages increase, all the prices go up too because people have to be able to pay their employees. And also it just, it just makes sense. Like, right? Like it's everything levels out. So everything goes up, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like this goes up and everything's more affordable, you know? It, the economic, especially in the U.S., everything just catches up, right? So are there places in the world that are going to be almost untouched by this? Yes, he says. Um, isolated, places that are isolated and very independent of their own can resource and source their own food, um, are comfortable with the technologies that they have, that don't feel an overall reliance on other countries, are there even countries like that that exist? He says, yes, there are. There are groups of little countries. He's showing me a little, like, almost like a, oh, that's weird. Almost like a Bahamas kind of, he's showing me islands. I don't know what this is or where this is, but he's showing me that, yeah, there are. There are some places that could be used as a model for how to be self-sufficient, not because you want to isolate, because they are not isolated. They're modern. Because I'm thinking like tribes in the woods kind of thing, like, you know, the off in the rainforest kind of thing that are don't see civilization, or et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's how they're protected in their own little space, isolated, right? He's saying it's not that they're isolated, it's that they are conscious and planning, like, it's almost like a, 
Okay, so the new New Zealand or Greenland, New Zealand might be one of these things. And kind of like that, that's the kind of vibe I'm getting. Like, oh, you guys, I'm so bad at geography. I did not take world geography and everything is all different now. So do not slay me in the comments, please. I mean, we can, well, whatever, I don't care. But um, you showed me that it's possible and that there are smaller models that we can use even in our capitalistic society, even in the United States that we could use to help build us stronger. But he says, it's really important that we understand that if you're acting on fear or you're making choices on fear, he says you're influenced by that which is the negative. And although you do have to plan for your, your different worst case scenarios, he says, which makes sense, you should be prepared. He says, if you, if you make decisions based on that, they're not gonna be the best decisions. You really need to be wise. And he says, considering science is extremely important, longevity and choices for the future generations is going to be much better to serve you than it is short-term solutions. So you do need to consider things like the environment and like the values that you're teaching your children and the younger generation, because if you don't do that, then what? There will continue to be chaos because there will be more separation and segregation, but there will be support and we need support not separation and segregation, that's what he's showing. Okay. And that could, because that leads to isolation and that leads people to kind of think things on their own and come up with these theories that aren't accurate. And he says they're not science-based, they're, they're based on um, like fear and, and worry about future loss and, and trauma. And that's understandable because you've been through a lot collectively and the mind is gonna be really ripe for more fear and traumatic concern and like doomsday kind of thinking. And, and he's like, you have to be balanced. You have to take into consideration actual information that that could happen. Yes. But he said, you also have to bring into the picture your, and he's not, he's not using words, dreams and desires for the future, but vision, like, like almost like strategic, you got to be strategic about the decisions you're making, not fear-based not loss-based. He's like, actually, it's interesting. I use the word fear because that's how it's coming through from what you're saying about the economy stuff. But what you're doing is like, what you're actually kind of leading into is like this loss-based mentality or lack mentality, like the not enough, or I'm going to lose this. So I have to hold on really tight. And really, when you hold on tight, you kill what you have, you suffocate it. You can't breathe, it can't grow. That kind of thing is like you got to share it, you got to expand, you got to be willing to to be a little risky in expanding, even though you're afraid that you're going to get sick or you're afraid that you're going to lose your money or what have you. You have to be strategic. He says strategic and not operate from a loss or a grief or a fear of losing mentality. Wow, the sun is like getting super bright just a minute. Silver. And like the shadows showing up. Okay, way better. All right, all right. Okay, so what else do we need to tap into? So we talked about the health thing. We talked about it kind of, I think those are two really big things. And then a little bit about, um, you talked a little bit about natural disaster stuff, like specifically related to fire. I think that's good to get us started for the new year for information. Um, I don't like to do stuff that's like negative, overtly negative, you guys. And I don't feel like this is, I think it's more informative than anything else. It's kind of very factual, which is what we would expect from Stephen Hawking is a factual scientist approach. So don't take anything literal. Don't freak out. Don't overreact. Just take it as information, parts of information that can help hopefully help you have just a different perspective and, and seek out other sources also, okay? Because at because at Above Life Channel, the purpose is always to inspire your spirit and give you some hope, but to encourage you to live your life. And this is your life. So make sure you're educated, make sure you're making healthy choices for your, your body, your mind, your soul, and your heart for you and your families, for you and your communities. Try not to get defeated by heavy, depressed energy or negativity. Try to let yourself be more strategic, actively engaged, and just aware, just a really aware, all right? So it's your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for being here for our interview, our afterlife channeling session with Stephen Hawking and the afterlife about 2022.